Welcome, everybody. It is Thursday, and you know what that means. It means your man and my brother Derek is back. Derek Wilburn, the Uncle Tom, your Uncle Tom, and the one who's going to break down what's going on in today's world. Without further ado, here's Derek Wilburn with Uncle Tom Talks. What do you think of that? Okay, check that out. What about this? Have you ever seen anything like this, bro? Huh? Never in my life. Neither has anybody else. I am Derek Wilburn. You are live on Uncle Tom Talks. Coming at you, I am going to break down something really interesting that happened on the floor or in, in the U.S. Senate in committee a um, week and a half ago, two weeks ago now. Uh, you know, the, all these confirmations are taking place for Biden nominees uh, for appointments into federal agencies or to federal benches. He is appointing judges at a terrifying clip, uh, at a terrifying pace. And all of them, of course, are committed social justice warrior. You know know the drill. We've covered that. But before I get there, I want to tell you about something interesting that just happened to me today on one of our media giant platforms, YouTube. So Tuesday, I air on Tuesdays and Thursdays. This is a Thursday edition of Uncle Tom Talks. On Tuesday, I did a breakdown viral video by Dr. Amir Zelenko. Vladimir Zelenko, if you didn't see the show, find it on conservative-daily.com. Go to the Uncle Uncle Tom Talks archives or find it on Rumble. Uh, Dr. Zelenko is, I wouldn't call him a whistleblower. He is a um, a very thoughtful man, very intelligent. He's a doctor to presidents and prime ministers. His credentials are unimpeccable. And he laid out a case using logic statistics uh, not a, not a frothing at the mouth maniac but using logic and statistics and evidence laid out a very cogent case for the the foolishness of encouraging people forcing people to get injected with drugs that they really don't need while at the same time squashing availability to drugs that are effective And I thought it was a very fascinating talk, a very fascinating show. I stopped his video a few times along the way to add my uh, two cents, which is what you do when you have a podcast. Well, that was Tuesday. And then um, yesterday, the heavyweight champion of the world uploaded it to Rumble. And I decided to put it on my YouTube channel because this is the sort of thing that people need to see and hear. We all need to be able to make informed decisions on everything, but especially our personal health care decisions. So I decided to put it on my YouTube channel so uh, my audience there could see it. I uploaded it to my YouTube channel this late this morning, early this afternoon. It hadn't been on my YouTube channel for an hour, not and not even one, maybe a little more than an hour, no more though. And I got this email. Heavyweight champ, will you put up image zero for the folks to see, please? This shows up in my email within an hour. If that bottom paragraph, YouTube doesn't allow claims about COVID-19 vaccinations that contradict expert consensus from local health authorities or the World Health Organization. YouTube does not allow things to be said on their platform that contradict the official government narrative. And now, if you go to my web, to my YouTube page and want to watch Tuesday night's Uncle Tom Talks podcast, this is what you see. Apollo Creed, please put up that page. That's what you now will get. They got rid of it within an hour, claiming it violates community standards because it is not in keeping with the official government narrative. Hasn't this happened elsewhere in history where news and voices of opposition that contradicted what the government wanted put out into the public domain 
were immediately shut down? Hasn't this happened elsewhere in history? It's happening right before our eyes. So if you do want to see Tuesday night, and you should, uh, this isn't just me being self-promoting, you need to listen to me, although you do. I titled it, It's a Conspiracy, Not a Conspiracy Theory. And those aren't my words. I simply lifted those from something that Dr. Zelenko said in his own video. After laying out the whole case, he concludes, this isn't a conspiracy theory. There's no theory here at all. This is a conspiracy. And if you want to see that, go to Uncle Tom Talks on Rumble and pull it up. So anyway, just want to cover that at the beginning of the show. YouTube has officially censored me. Not the first time. Won't be the last. Uh, I got off of Facebook and Twitter for the exact same reason. Um, I wish every conservative. Can you imagine if every conservative in the world said enough and deactivated both their Facebook and Twitter accounts right now? Boom. I wish I had a magic wand. I could make it happen. I don't. But uh, principle became more important to me than the need to get information across those platforms. So I just dropped them. And YouTube is next. Uh, I'll get migrated completely over to Rumble before much longer. So we're going to get into tonight's Uncle Tom Talks. And I can't do that by myself. The only way I bring these podcasts to you is with the intervention of the former two-time heavyweight champion of the world back at the mothership, pulling the levers and pushing the buttons. He's my left hand. He is Apollo Creed. What do you think of him being trained by Apollo Creed? I think he's destined to get his butt beat down. That's what I think. I think if Creed's training him, he is going to get beat down. Okay? He's going to get beat like a rented mule. That's what's going to happen. Uh, Apollo Creed, get cut number one ready. So I am titling tonight's podcast, today's podcast, depending on what time zone you're in, Everything Wrong with Government in 10 Minutes. That's our title. Everything that's wrong with government in just 10 minutes. Aloof, arrogant, incompetent, nincompoops. So the ideological direction of a given presidential administration isn't necessarily right or wrong by definable terms. It's just differences of opinion and beliefs. I am of a different opinion and belief than those who are in the White House and in power right now. If you believe that two plus two equals seven, then you're wrong. That's just wrong, right? That's demonstrably incorrect information. If you believe that a LBGTQ plus whatever it's up to now, cross-dressing, trans, uh, high-heel-wearing uh, individual belongs at the top of the Federal Health Administration making decisions, that's your opinion. Okay, in your opinion, I can disagree with, but does it make you wrong? I just, not the way that I would do it, right? So everything that's wrong with government in 10 minutes, this is an examination of the questioning of a Biden appointee in the Senate. You know, I'm, I, I'm not sure what committee this is off the top of my head. Um, I, I really don't know. But Rand Paul sits on this committee. Uh, I've met Rand Paul, had a chance to spend some time with him professionally and socially. And I, I, I'm a big fan. Uh, very, very, very smart man. Just huge brains. Um, we sat around at a, at a resort in Florida smoking cigars together. It's a long story, but I got a chance to pick him apart a little, and I can't find anything anything not to like about the man. Uh, we don't agree on everything politically. He's a little more libertarian in some areas than I think is healthy, but uh, he's, he's brilliant. And when he questions these people, he leaves no stone unturned. He, he's not a prosecutor. Like Ted Cruz is a former prosecutor. And former prosecutors are, are really good at setting traps, at letting people talk their way into the hole they cannot climb out of, right? You give a man a rope, and he either builds a ladder or a noose. And that's what people like Cruz do. Rand Paul just asks pretty common every day. I mean, he asks the type of questions that your third grade teacher would have asked you in the third grade. 
And this man cannot answer it, will not answer it, does not answer it. In five minutes, Rand Paul asks him the same question. I didn't count, but I'd say seven or eight times the same question. And it's not a complex question. As Senator Paul says during this clip, it's not a gotcha question. I'm not trying to trip you up. It's a pretty straightforward, simple question. But this man's answer, or rather lack of an answer, demonstrates blatantly everything that's wrong with our government in just a matter of minutes. Because we have a bunch of incompetent, aloof, and arrogant nincompoops. So Apollo Creed, let's roll cut number one. Do you believe the taxpayer has a right to know how you spend their money? Uh, Senator, uh, Dr. Paul, thank you for that question. Uh, we, in the Office of Entrepreneurial Development, our purview is helping our small business navigate through their taxes. Uh, we, we're not in tax policy. so we No, no, we're not talking them. about uh, tax policy. I'm talking about the citizens. Do the citizens of the United States have a right to know how you're spending their money? Well, That's in true. our area, we're focused on uh, developing entrepreneurs. No, no, this is a transparency question. Do you, do you think the citizens of the United States, through their representatives, have a right to get information from you and your department about how you're spending the money? That's three. We, my purview is to assist our resource partner network and the community. So it's sort of a yes or no. I don't think you're getting the question. It's a real simple question. The answer is yes, of course the citizens do, but you, you can't say that? I can uh, attest to what we're doing at the Office of Entrepreneurial Development. No, but I mean, it's a more general question. Do the citizens of the United States have the right to know how you are spending their money? Dr. Paul, uh, I can shine the, the light on what we're doing at OED. And, you know, in terms of tax preparation uh, materials that we now, have. This is a really general question, just on transparency. Okay, Do the it. citizens of the United States, through their representative, have the right to ask questions about how you're spending their money? I'm here to answer yeah, the right questions there, that you have on so the Office of Entrepreneurship. It's a yes or no. Can you acknowledge it? There we go. Backed it up a couple seconds, if you will. So we're up to five. This entire clip is about five minutes long. I don't have a timer in front of me in, in my view, but I think we're probably halfway through it. It's probably been about two and a half minutes. In two and a half minutes, Rand Paul has asked this man five times, and he's going to ask him a bunch more times, do the citizens of the United States of America have a right to know how you're spending their money. I mean, you, you would think, here's a chance for a guy, a lefty, clearly a lefty, he's a Biden appointee, they're all so far to the left, there's no sense in discussing that. Here's a chance for him to make himself the hero. All he has to say is, of course they do. Of course they do. The American people, the tax, they pay for everything. It's all their money. They pay for the desk that I sit behind, the pen that I write with, the building that I go to work in every day, they own it all. They pay for it all. They pay the heat to keep that building warm. They pay for the air conditioning to keep it cool. So since it's all their money, Senator, absolutely yes. The citizens of the United States of America have every right in the world to know how we in Washington, D.C. or affiliated agencies around the nation agencies that are affiliated with, with Washington, D.C. They have every right in the world to know how we're spending their money. Next question. That's all he has to say is yes, but he can't do it, won't do it. What does that tell you? Okay, roll it. The United States, through their representative, have the right to ask questions about how you're spending their money. I'm here to answer any questions that you have on the so Office of Entrepreneurship. It's a yes or no. Can you acknowledge that, yes, citizens have a right and an expectation to know how their money is spent by organizations? That's why you come here. It's for oversight. It's a very general question. It's not accusing you of anything. It's just saying, do citizens have the right to know how you're spending their money? Dr. Paul, I would love to just shed some more light on the Office of Entrepreneurial Development. But you can't answer whether or not citizens have the right to know how you're spending the money. I'd be happy to talk about our tax preparation classes with our resource partners. But you can't acknowledge, yes or no, whether citizens have the right and the expectation through their representatives, Republicans and Democrats, to ask you for information on how money is spent. That's a yes or no question. It's about, it's a very basic question about transparency. 
but I, I'm not hearing you answer a, a yes or no. Dr. Pond would love to tell you more about what we're doing at the Office of Entrepreneurial Development. I'm energized to be here and talk about our programs uh, throughout the country. But, but this sounds like you're obfuscating the issue and you're not willing to answer that, that there is sunlight and that you're open to any kind of scrutiny by representatives as to how you're spending the money. Are, are, you don't believe the citizens have the right to understand how you're spending money and to ask questions through their representatives about how you spend the money. Dr. Paul, I'm here to answer any questions that you have. on. But I'm asking you, do citizens have the right to know that? And you're, you're giving me some other answer that isn't an answer to the question. This is a question, do citizens have the right to expect you to answer questions about how your money is spent? Dr. Paul, I'm here to answer any questions that you have on the fulfillment of our OED programs that include the right. resource partner footprint, the community. Let, let the record know that the witness is refusing to answer a very basic question about transparency. The reason I ask this question is we sent you questions back in the beginning of the summer about the community navigator program. These are not political questions that I know of. How many organizations applied for funds under the community navigators program? That question was asked in the beginning of last summer. We asked again in November, and we haven't had answers. I think your staff decided to send us some piece of paper today or yesterday, still not answering that question. What's the geographic distribution of states and localities covered by each grantee? These are not even politically charged questions that we sometimes encounter, but you can't even answer whether or not citizens have an expectation to get answers from you, and then when we ask questions, you don't answer them. That, to me, is a serious uh, uh, breach of, of, your, of your duty as a civil servant. You can't answer a question on sunlight, and then when we send you written questions of an objective nature, you refuse to answer the questions. You don't even respond to us. I mean, that, that uh, is utterly contemptuous and disregarding of representative government. Dr. Paul, we did answer your letter, so uh, I would be happy to answer. When was the answer? When was the questions answered? Uh, we will get back to your office, but I know that we answered. No, the, the, an the questions that I just asked you, the two questions, we got something yesterday or today from your office when you knew you were going to be here and have to answer some questions. You resisted for months sending any answer, but you still have an answer. The, the two questions that I just outlined, I do not believe we've got an answer for either one of those questions. Well, Dr. Paul, we believe in transparency, and we, uh, we did <laughs> respond to your question. No more questions. Let me point out, I believe the, um, the Community Navigator program started in, in December, so it's, it's a relatively new program. So uh, the information is just, I think, becoming available in a way that it's going to be meaningful for us to be able to obtain the type of information that uh, Senator Paul has requested. Uh, Senator Hickenlooper. Okay, kill it right there. Thank you very much. So, Cardin to the rescue. So, Cardin comes flying in at the end. Well, the programs are new. 13 times, 13 times, I believe the runtime of that video you just watched was five minutes and some seconds five minutes and 12 seconds or something like that. It's right around five minutes. In five minutes, Rand Paul asks him 13 times, do the citizens of the United States have a right to know how you're spending their money? And all he has is his canned robotic answer. Same one every time he gets asked. I'm here to answer questions about the department. Of blah, 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 blah. People wonder, well, some people, how is it even possible for a nation to get $30 trillion into debt? How is that even possible? You just saw how it's possible. You just saw it. When, when you've got these, these federal agencies, forget what Congress is doing. What Congress is doing is bad enough. So they passed these bills, massive spending bills massive bills themselves. I mean, thousand page long documents that are given to your elected representatives and told we're voting on this tomorrow. Okay, you, you, they can't read it. They know that this, it's, that's impossible. You can't read it. And the Democrats tell their caucus, you're gonna be voting yes, like it or not. You're voting yes, or you will not be getting re-election money from the DNC. Your office is gonna be moved downstairs next to the boiler, and you are going to get reassigned to the committee on investigating rabid rats in Turkey. Okay, or you'll be voting yes. That's how it works in DC. And I'm not gonna absolve the Republicans of doing the same thing, but they aren't in power right now. 
So they pass, they get these thousand page bills. They give them to your representatives at nine o'clock Tuesday morning and say, we're having a vote at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And all the Democrats vote yes. And $1.3 trillion of spending gets passed. So that's what Congress is doing. But these agencies, the FDA, the EPA, the alphabet soup there, so the BLM, that's Bureau of Land Management, by the way, the, the, the SEC, the FAA, the FDA, they're, they're, there's myriad federal agencies that pass regulations that you have to live by, that you never have the opportunity to examine, let alone vote on through your elected representatives. They pass these budgets, appropriations, spending bills to fund federal agencies. So all of a sudden, some federal agency, you don't even know where they're located. They're on G Street in Washington, D.C., or F Street, or whatever. If you go to D.C., you see all these buildings all over the place. They get funded with $30 billion for this fiscal year, or $50 billion, or $70 billion, or $8 billion, whatever. And what happens to that money? Poof, you don't know. You have no idea how they're spending it. They're spending it on research grants that get given to universities where they're, where they're researching the effect of uh, carcinogens on, uh, uh, on female dolphins and kinds of stuff. I mean, the stuff that they, you apply, get grant money from the federal government, that's how it works. So these little and big departments like this gentleman, they are doing all kinds of stuff with your money that is not only in the dark and beneath the table, they don't want you to know. He clearly does not want you to know. And when you have $30 billion passing through a handful of people's hands, not a lot of people involved, some of that money is going to go to things that it's not supposed to go to. It's going to get rinsed and laundered and end up in someone's pocket. You know, let's just say that you're you're responsible for a $20 billion budget and your husband or wife works at Ohio State University and writes a grant, a grant request to be funded to the tune of $160,000 for research on the effects of aspirin on rat penises. And this happens. Okay, I'm not just making this. This happens. And that grant gets fully funded to the tune of $160,000, and your husband or wife, who is the grantee, who is the recipient of the money at Ohio State University, also is paid a salary. So that's a laundering scheme. And every now and then these people get caught, but guys like this Madrid man, who you just saw, who just looks very weaselly sitting there refusing to answer a simple question, he knows how this game is played. I'm not accusing him of playing in it because I don't know. But if they say, yes, the American people have a right to complete and full total transparency, you elected representatives, representatives of the people who are charged with the responsibility of monitoring our books and making sure that stuff isn't happening, you have every right to see the checkbook. I will bring it in. Set it on the table, Senator Paul. There it is. You can go through it. You can look at the receipts. If I say that we spent out of our budget $2,025 last June to have an HVAC company come in and repair the air conditioning because it was getting very hot on the third floor and we didn't know why. So an HVAC company came in and I wrote them a check for $2,025. Here's the receipt from the HVAC company, here's the check that I wrote them. Compare them, you will see that they line up. And you can do that for everything in the checkbook. I have never pilfered, we have never pilfered the American people, not one time. How many federal agencies do you think can say what I just said? And it be the truth. They don't want you to know what they are doing with your money either because some of it's going to nefarious activity or because they just don't want you to know because your money is being trifled away. When I have a $30 billion budget 
600 grand here, 1.2 million there, really isn't that significant. I mean, it's really not. You know how much money a billion dollars is? Just one billion dollars? I mean, ever stop and think about this? If you've got one million dollars, which is still a lot of money, people, it's, it's if you put a million dollars to work and earn 8% on your million dollars, that's $80,000 a year in interest alone. You never touch the principal, $80,000 a year, depending on where in the country you live, you can live reasonably comfortably on $80,000 a year, unless you've got a family of seven or something. So that's $1 million. Well, you got to have $1 million 10 times to have 10 million, right? Now you're very wealthy. Well, you got to have 10 million 10 times to have 100 million, right? Ton of money, a hundred million dollars. Well, you have to have one hundred million dollars ten more times to have one billion, and you've got to do that whole process I just described thirty times over to get to thirty billion dollars. So, if you have a budget of thirty billion dollars, and you siphon off three hundred and fifty grand and it somehow makes its way into your cousin's, niece's, nephew's, dog groomer's, mom's bank account. You know, it's bare. The chances of finding it reasonably good, unless and until a detailed audit is done to find out how that $350,000 go to Mrs. Smith. And he knows that, and that's why he cannot say, Yes, the American people have a right to full and total transparency. You can check our books whenever you want. And these agencies, there's dozens of them, all doing the same thing. And that is how a country gets $30 trillion in the hole. Okay, so Rand Paul just finished his questioning of Mr. Madrid. The next senator decides rather than pursue my line of questioning, I want to pick up where Senator Paul left off. Roll it. Mr. Chairman, uh, thanks uh, for being here, Mr. Madrid. But before I start, I do want to come back to, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, flummoxed by your exchange with Senator Paul. I, I can't understand um, your position on this. Why is it that you think that taxpayers shouldn't be able to have an accounting of how you're spending money? Uh, Senator Hawley, great to see you. Uh, we do believe in accountability and transparency. But that's not my question. My question is, why don't you think they should be able to see how you're spending the money, that it's their money, not your money? And I just don't understand. Why is it you think they shouldn't receive an accounting of how your office is spending the money, of how SBA is spending its money? Well, what's the There must be some philosophical objection here. I just don't understand what it is. You should be able to see everything that we report and through our public reporting. So we do believe in accountability and transparency. Oh, so you do think then that the public should be able to, to see what you spend and what you, what you do. Is that, is that right? I'm um, replying in terms of our footprint OED and our public reporting on our resource partners. And our so, partners. okay, I got it. So the locus of your disagreement with Senator Paul is you just don't want to answer the questions he asked you. That's, that's the real answer. Senator, right? thank you for your question. I'm here to, you know, I'm here to uh, report on the Office of Entrepreneurial Development, my purview, and so that's what I'll continue to do. Yeah, the reason I think it's so um, irritating, frankly, is because this administration and this is SBA has repeatedly and consistently stonewalled this committee, and in particular, the, in particular, the Republicans on this committee, for going on a solid year now. It's really extraordinary. So to have you come in here and say that you don't think that you ought to have to give an accounting for taxpayer money is really extraordinary. So I just want the record to reflect that, that I completely agree with Senator Paul and Senator Ernst, that your position on this, this administration's position on this is just really, frankly, unbelievable. And I'm startled that you're taking the positions you are. Let me ask you about uh, some other accountability for this fiscal year, fiscal year 22, I should say, SBA submitted budget justifications that request funding increases for most of the programs and initiatives that uh, we're here to discuss. I want to know about some of the, the data, however, that's been published about how effective these various programs are. Um, for example, small business development centers 
um, according to uh, data collected uh, by the SBA's uh, Office of Entrepreneur Development in their annual studies from 2003 to 2012, only 20 percent of program participants reported that the services they received enabled them to retain current staff. Only 16 percent reported that services received enabled them to hire new staff. And only 29 percent of participants said that the services they received had a positive impact on their profit margin. So let me just Hold ask right you, here. Mr. Matter, does the Office okay. of Entre right Entrepreneurial here. Development continue to conduct Great. annual studies of program participants to assess the impact? Okay, so here's what's about to happen. Here's what just happened. First of all, let me ask you this. So this is the Office of Entrepreneurial Development, a sub-office of the SBA, the Small Business Association. So the Small Business Association is funded, and it in turn funds the Office of Entrepreneurial Development. Have you ever heard of the Office of Entrepreneurial Development? You ever heard of that department? Ever been there? Have any idea what they do? Do you have any clue? So the senator... So the SBA has submitted a funding increase for 2022, which all they all do. I mean, there's you, you never we never create an agency or department with a, a vision, with a goal in mind. This is why we're creating this department. And once that department fulfills its charter, once that department does what it was put together to do, we disband it, we wind it down and it goes away. That never happens. Right. They just keep on going and growing. So the SBA is funding increase requests to, the, to Congress, which of course they'll get because the Democrats are in control of both houses of Congress and all Democrats do is spend. They never cut spending. Um, that's just a matter of fact. That's not sour grapes on my behalf. That's just a matter of fact. They only spend more. If you don't believe it, check the budget on a smaller scale of someplace like California. It just goes and goes and goes. So the Senator reads statistics from clients of the Office of Entrepreneurial Development, and only 20%, only 16%, only 29% have reported that this department has really helped them. Okay, so, so somewhere between 84 and 90% must have responded, this place stinks. I mean, it's really done nothing for me. So his question is, why would we increase your funding when according to your own reporting, okay, he just cited reports from the SBA from, I think, what do you say, 2003 to 2012 or something like that. It was a, long, a big enough sample size. When according to your own reporting, you're not providing much benefit to anybody. So A, why are the American people paying for this period? And B, why should the American people pay even more than they already are to continue funding your failure? This doesn't even make any sense. This is how a government gets $30 trillion in debt because no one's minding the store, no one's watching the cash register, except the people who make cash registers, right? So it's in their better interest for that thing to get replaced periodically. Roll the film. The effectiveness of these programs. We report on our outcomes and our goals, um, and that is uh, standard per the statute. So we report on the metrics and the, the goals annually. And but, those are but do you do available. studies? But 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 do you do studies to assess the impact of the programs? I mean, we know that SBA did from 2003 to 2012. My staff hasn't been able to find any reports published. I think past 2012. So I, this is just a factual question. Do, do you conduct annual studies of your program participants to assess the impact, or or no? As, uh, Senator, we issue public reports, so we'd be happy to work with your office on the data that we do have and the reporting that we do have. But. <laughs> Do you conduct annual studies of program participants? That's my, that's my question. Uh, we report on the data that's aggregated uh, from our resource partners. So that's a yes or that's a no? We can report on the- When was the last time you published an annual study? We can uh, work with your office to give you our reporting that we have on our well, when was the last time you published an annual? I'm just trying, this is, these are not gotcha questions. I'm just trying to establish some basic questions, some basic facts so I can ask you some questions about them. So either you're not prepared or you're not here to answer my questions, which goes back to what we talked about earlier. So let's try again. 
when was the last time you published an annual report? You can read the memo your staff keeps giving. Maybe we should have the staffer come testify. He seems to be the one who's giving you the answers. We could probably make room at the table. If somebody's willing to answer questions, I'd love to hear from them. Go ahead. Senator, thank you for your question. We report publicly, annually, on the metrics that are per the statute. We'd be happy to work with your office to supply them, the most recent ones. Okay, so those are, you survey the participants of the program annually? This is the data that we receive uh, through our uh, resource partners, like Capital yes, Infusion, no Unique Client Served, et cetera. We'd be happy to work with well, you. Well, have the performance yeah. metrics that you've seen, have they improved since the publication of the 2013 report? I'm sorry? Have the performance metrics that you've seen, you say that you collect performance metrics. Have, yes, they have. There's, uh, there's some of the metrics that have improved, and I would be happy to supply them. Give me, well, give them to me. I mean, what, what, so tw in 2012, only 20% of program participants said that the services they received helped them retain current staff. So what's the number now? Um, I can give you what we do have in terms of the capital infusion, and I'd be happy to work with your office. Okay. Um, I wish I could say this was productive, but um, it's manifestly <laughs> not. And I don't know what to say, Mr. Chairman, um, other than that, we'll give you a bunch of questions for the record. But if these, if we're going to have these hearings and be able to do any kind of oversight, you're going to have to prepare and you're going to have to come prepared to answer questions. And what this performance today, frankly, is just ridiculous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me just uh, reinforce a, a couple comments that have been made. Uh, first, every member of this committee is entitled to as much information as we can get for oversight. We do believe in. All right, Kiel, so, he, Card, so, so what, how did you get $30 trillion in debt? There you go. You just got the answer to that question. Let's move this to the private sector. Okay, let's take this Madrid or Madrid, however he pronounces his name. Let's say that he works for a private company or a publicly traded company. American Airlines, IBM, Apple, Walmart, whatever. He doesn't work for the government where he can just sit there and not answer questions, look these people right in the eye and not answer questions. So you're a vice president at Hewlett Packard, and this guy is one of your marketing and sales directors. And you catch him in the hallway and you say, hey, Mark, um, uh, I haven't seen the sales reports for last month. Um, can, can, you, can, you give me, can you give me those or at least give me a quick update? And Mark says, uh, well, Mr. M Mr. Smith, I'll be glad to meet with you and, and talk with you about that. No, 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 Marley, I don't want to meet. I'm meeting with you right now. I don't want to call a meeting. I just I haven't seen the sales report. They're, they're normally on my desk by the 5th. Today's the 11th. Uh, what, 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 how are we looking? Well, Mr. Smith, I'd be glad to meet with you at, at any point in time. I believe in transparency and I'll, I'll, I'll come to your office and we can discuss it. No, Mark, you don't understand. I don't want to set up a meeting. I just want to know how the sales data for last month look. The month before last, we weren't real hot. We only had 60 million in sales. We're hoping for 80. How did we do last month? Did we, did we increase from 60? Did we work our way up or are we going the wrong direction or did it stay the same? Just tell me. Well, uh, Vice President Smith, I appreciate that question. And uh, I'd be happy to meet with your staff at any time and, and talk about the answer. Okay, put, put that into the private sector. What happens to this Mark Madrid knucklehead? How long does he maintain a job at, at Toyota USA National Headquarters in Texas doing that? He would be fired before noon the first day. Yet this bureaucrat, whom you have never heard of, flatly refuses to answer any questions at all by the representatives that you have elected to hold him accountable as to what he is doing with your money. And that is everything wrong with government in 10 minutes. And that is how a country gets $30 trillion in debt, right there. If you've been watching Uncle Tom Talks for any amount of time, you know about the gaming sensation that is sweeping the internet. They're talking about this all over the world. It's how we close the show and it's called 
real fake headlines. Real fake headlines. <laughs> real fake headlines. So I am going to give you the opportunity to participate in this show. All you have to do is type one character into the chat. However you're viewing or listening to the podcast, if you can type one character into the chat, that one character should be a number, one, two, three, or four, to identify which of the following headlines you think is the fake. Okay, I got four headlines. You tell me which one of these four I just made up. Headline number one. This is a softball. If you get this wrong, something's wrong with you. Michael Avenatti, convicted of stealing $300,000 from Stormy Daniels. Creepy porn lawyer, creepy porn client. Did he steal three hundred? No honor amongst thieves. Did he just get convicted of stealing money from his own client? Headline number two. COVID is running rampant among deer research says. COVID is running rampant among deer, research shows. Headline number three, teachers try to lock, <laughs> teachers lock out California students after they stage mask revolt. So the students in California say, we've had enough. And then the teachers say, oh no, you don't. And headline number four, Billionaire Trump donor to take over CNN and turn it into Fox News Light. Billionaire Trump donor to take over CNN and turn it into Fox News Light. Okay, so all you have to do is type the number one, two, three, or four into the chat. I'm working hard at shortening these podcasts because people are less likely to listen to an hour and a half long show than they are one that's 30 minutes long. I'm failing, but I'm trying to speed things up. So I'm going to give you the four headlines one more time, rapid fire, and then the heavyweight champ and I are going to begin revealing to you what's going down. Headline number one, Michael Avenatti, the creepy, creepy porn lawyer. Michael Avenatti convicted of stealing 300 k from Stormy Daniels. Is that true or false? Headline number two, COVID is running rampant among deer. Research shows white tail, black tail, mule deer. Headline number three teachers lock out California students after they stage mask revolt. And headline number four billionaire Trump donor to take CNN and turn it into Fox News Light. Vote now, vote often. Just as like voting in Chicago, the more times you vote, the better. One, two, three, or four. I'm going to leave the voting open for 10 more seconds. The heavyweight champ will inform us all who's voting for what. Some nights we get a handful of votes. Some nights we get a handful of dozen. Just depends on how, how people are feeling. All right, Creed, what do we got? Anything? Yeah, we got uh, mostly ones. And one, two, uh, mo mostly one, a couple of fours, but everyone's leaning on one. Is that a fact? Okay, here we go. So put up headline number one again, just to remind the folks what they're voting on. The creepy porn lawyer is convicted of stealing $300,000 from Stormy Daniels. Please put up image number two. Do you want the... Uh, the words or the image the image image two. Oh, okay perfect do you even know how to work one of those things this headline is the truth my friends the creepy porn lawyer michael avenatti has been convicted again okay he was already convicted a year ago of embezzling from nike corporation now he's convicted for his pilfering of money from stormy daniels um how much yeah we're good let's 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 run cut number four it's real short run court cut number four real quick 
me, you're like the Holy Spirit. You are <laughs> all places at all times, right? I mean, you, I, I do. I see you all over cable news. I see you, you know, there is a, a, uh, a seat available Spirit. if you want to be a co-host at The View. You might, you know, there's people here you can pitch. <laughs> He didn't make uh, a great uh, video around the table. Yeah. Uh, we just like, flopping all over the so, And I see, and I have the same issue with Giuliani. He's everywhere. I got, right. And so I, I, I question him. myself when I see Giuliani. I, said, I see you on TV so much. When do you have time to be lawyering? To be doing like real lawyering? Because you're, in, I mean, you're representing, you know, migrants. You're representing. But he has a great, bigger calling here. That being a lawyer is minimal compared to what he's doing. The priesthood, what a, whatever. <laughs> he's out there saving the Look, country. It, you know what? I'm, I'm very fortunate in that I'm surrounded. He's saving I the must country. ask you the sixty-four thousand dollar question. Are you going to run for president? You're going oh. to Iowa, right? You're going to Iowa. Well, I'm, I'm going to be in uh, Ohio next week in Iowa. And, and here's what I'll say. Hey, all right, a lot of people have approached me and more. suggested that I... A lot of people have approached him and suggested he run. He was the Democrat savior. They loved him. They couldn't stop gushing over this guy. And his entire claim to fame was based on this, image number three. This is what Avenatti propped himself up on. This picture right here. And this professional prostitute claiming that she had a sexual affair, a one night stand with Donald Trump. You know how many people have this picture? You know how many people Trump posed? I mean, Kathy Lee, that, that comic that held up his severed head and ruined her own career. She was at a, one of Trump's parties and have a, has a picture like this with Trump. Every celebrity in the country got this picture. And Stormy Daniels turned this picture into a he said she, I mean nobody knows these two people in the picture whether or not they ever had a sexual liaison we don't you don't know I don't know only those two know and the creepy porn lawyer jumps on this and rides this thing to fame and fortune to people on the view slobbering all over him uh, and asking if he's going to run for president and he's the Democrat savior of the world savior of the country and now he's been twice convicted and is going to sit in prison. What does that tell you about the Democrat today's Democrat Party? This was their golden boy. <laughs> and Stormy Daniel and, and for her, her lawsuit against Trump, it got thrown out by a California judge, no less. And the judge actually ruled against her. The judge ruled that she had to pay restitution to Trump. She had to pay trump's legal fees so this judge in california who was overseeing the whole thing said this is such a waste of everyone's time i can't believe it throw this case out of here don't come in my court with a he said she said and made her pay trump not the other way around that's what a farce that whole thing was but avenatti who was the democrat who was going to save the country has been convicted yet again headline number two we had a couple of votes for number two, if I remember correctly. Throw that up there. COVID is running rampant among deer, comma, research shows. Let's go with image number, what are we up to? Five. My friends, this is not false. This is not fake. <laughs> this, is, this is from NBC News, which... <laughs> Um, maybe that makes it fake, but um, I'm going to read this real quickly. Scientists swabbed the nostrils of white-tailed deer in Ohio and found evidence that humans had spread the coronavirus to deer at least six times, according to a study published last month in Nature. Six times. And this is on NBC News' website. <laughs> this, this is dated January 3rd. So this is about, a, what, five months ago. We went from six deer. Someone shoved swabs in deer nostrils. Okay, how would you like to have that job? <laughs> somebody, <laughs> some, somebody is cramming swabs into the nose of white-tailed deer in Ohio. They have found, quote, evidence that humans had spread the coronavirus to deer at least six times. And the headline you're looking at now, well, the heavyweight champ took it down, but the headline is COVID is running rampant among deer, research shows. Six, 
six confirmed cases of somebody picking a deer's nose, literally picking a deer's nose. Six confirmed cases, and it's the research shows that it's running rampant. <laughs> Let's put up headline number three. Uh, this is our teachers in California. Don't think we got any votes on this one, or did we? I don't know. We got a couple votes here, Creed? No threes. No one believed in the three. No. Well, everyone believed in it, actually, but I know what you mean. Teachers lock out California students after they stage mask revolt. Image number six, please. This is true. This is true. Even students in California are starting to realize the ridiculousness of what's happening. So the, the students said, you know what? We're not wearing them. The teacher said, you know what? Fine. We're going to lock the doors to the building and we're going to keep all our toys in the sandbox and not play with you. That's how radical the teaching profession in this country has come that become they actually locked students out of the building to which they go to supposedly learn and let's put up headline number four do we have a couple votes for four i think we did uh, Billy, we had oh, a couple votes for four for sure yeah all right all right here we go i gotta bring this i gotta i gotta land this ship in the next four minutes billionaire where'd it go billionaire trump donor you put it up. Uh, Millionaire Trump donor to take over CNN. CNN turned uh, into Fox. Normal, are you switching? Hey, we can hear you, Creed. We can hear you, Creed. Is that my, my bad. One ah, time. billionaire Trump. Do, do, do you want me to get rough? Wouldn't be the first time. No, my bad. I apologize, Terrible. sir. If I got to, I mean, I, I'm telling you, that heavyweight champ stuff, I don't fall for that. All right. Uh, this isn't I actually the heavyweight champ. This is his replacement, so no worries. Well, then that's even better. I could throw some lefts and rights your way and uh, knock your block off. No problem. Yes, sir. Billionaire Trump donor to take over CNN, turn it into Fox News Lite. I've done something tonight that I've never done before on Uncle Tom Talks. Let's go to image number seven, please. This is true. So viewers of Uncle Tom Talks, for the first time in the history of Uncle Tom Talks, you've been double-crossed. There will be no winners tonight because all four headlines were true. I double-crossed you. I stabbed you in the back. Can we run cut number eight? Do we have that ability tonight? We do. I can run that whenever you want. Let's do it. Let's run cut number eight. This is only 13 seconds long. Check this out. I would like to see CNN evolve back to the kind of journalism that it started with and, uh, you know, actually have journalists, which would be unique and refreshing. Imagine that. Imagine that. CNN, which has been on the ropes forever, they have nobody watches them. They've got 16 viewers. Uh, their, their hosts are so far to the left, Don Lemon and this whole crew. Uh, everybody knows what CNN has become. And it's a shame. The cable news network, what he's referring to, what cable TV was new, was fresh in the 1970s. And the cable news network was the only news, 24-7 news network in the world. And it was truly an objective. It was a good news source site. And what he's saying is we need to get back to that. So a billionaire Trump donor is taking it over. He's going to turn it into Fox News Lite, according to his own. That's what he claims he's going to do. And I have a feeling that Cuomo and, and Lemon and all those talking heads at CNN are about to get their pink slips. That headline was real. All four of them were real. There are no winners tonight. But you're a winner for coming to Uncle Tom Talks, which you can find. I am hosted, if you didn't know, by Conservative Daily, conservative-daily.com. Go to conservative-daily.com, grab a membership, uh, watch Uncle Tom Talks or some other hosts there that do podcasts as well. And on screen now is all the digits, Rumble, Twitch, Telegram, all that stuff. So give me some likes, give me some positive reviews, particularly on Apple, uh, Apple Talk, whatever it is, uh, and text. Oh, do we have the text as well, Creed? or Zach, or whoever, you guys are tag-teaming me. Freedom to 89517. You will get updates on yourself right into the palm of your hand. 
uh, just before Uncle Tom Talks is about to go on the air so you don't miss future episodes. If you like what you heard, tell a friend and come back live for The Real Deal on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I'm Derek Wilburn coming at you from the cotton fields of eastern Alabama. Hope you have a blessed weekend. Thank you for joining Uncle Tom Talks with Derek Wilburn, the wonderful man giving us the truth every day that he is on the air. And we just want to thank you again for all that you do and all the honesty that you put towards the American people that we need to address. So thank you very much.